Hello, it's episode 361 of the official podcast. 362, uh, minor correction right there. 362 of the official podcast. It's a special episode because there's um, breaking clips from Kaya about the boogie situation. New boogie stuff going on. Yeah, Did so we, talk about last we were week recording the... Yeah, we t- brought it up on the bonus. You turned us on onto this. Um, what's the guy's name? What's the YouTube channel that made an entire documentary on Boogie? Mike Clum. Mike Clum. Mike Clum? Yeah. yeah. Right. He made an entire like 50 minute or something documentary, which is very interesting. And I decided uh, to tell Jackson to shut up during the bonus and let me pull clips for the next main episode because I figured this could be interesting. And it kind of was. So I brought some clips today. Jackson, and if you're listening mm-hmm. on audio, we'll try to, I suppose, describe some of the scenery. If you're on YouTube, it should be on your screen. So thank you to Mike Klum for filming Boogie over the course of nine months, I believe, right? He said he just followed Boogie around. Yeah, it was nine. So it was nine months. But how, like I said in the bonus, halfway through, I think he said he took a few months off because Boogie was just so depressing with his victimhood. And all that kind of stuff that he just he didn't he didn't want to keep going because it was just so oppressive. There actually is a scene of yeah, the guy sitting on the couch and saying, "I've never interviewed someone so depressing. <laughs> just nothing good <laughs> ever it comes out of his mouth. <laughs> it's just such a bummer." And I don't. Want, he actually explicitly says, "I don't want people to think my channel's just a downer." <laughs> um, okay, it's I brought a the first risk. clip, which is Boogie in the bathtub. And he's showing us his bank account. Everybody has always been curious, like, well, how much money does he actually have? And how much did he used to have? Where did it all go? And he actually shows us here. He's playing with the rubber duckies in the bath, by the way. Yeah, so when it comes to financial approach, I don't fucking know what I'm doing. Money comes in, money goes out. For the longest time, my ex-wife handled that shit, but then I got divorced. I don't know where my money is. I don't know what it's doing. The only thing I've ever done with it is I threw it into crypto and then lost a shitload of it. (laughs) Well, here's everything. That sounds about right. If you want to see, there's 2,000. Okay, I can pause this on like semi-coherent frame here. Uh, At the bottom, you see his mortgage, which is in the hundreds of thousands, actually 160,000 or something. 163,000. Yeah. Yeah, and his bank account, 2800 bucks. That's all he has yeah. left. And he openly says, look, I don't know money. My wife used to handle that. I don't know where the money comes from. I don't know where it goes. It just, you know, I used to just get paid by YouTube and she would do all the paying and shopping and stuff. I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. I'll just put it all in NFTs. And that disappeared. As you can see, the bank account has no... uh crypto tab here so for you audio listeners the graphic on screen said that he used to have 750,000 in the bank and he lost 600,000 to crypto which on crypto which is insane just (laughs) utterly insane yeah which we have to take his word for because it's not on screen it's not actually reflected in his bank account obviously I bet it was more he still has it you think I would Yeah, so I would wager a guess. Boogie was at like the top of YouTube gaming for a That's while. That's what I was going where, to ask. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The, the rates for YouTube gaming, I imagine, back then were probably a lot higher pre adpocalypse, and he was crushing it back then. He probably had so much more, and he probably lost so much more on yeah. crypto as well because he went hog wild, if you guys remember that. It did say that these are yeah. just the savings he had, so he must have obviously mm. made way, way, yeah. way more in income alone. And just we're gonna get to it. I thought I had heard from some somewhere. It might have even been in a documentary. Not one hundred percent sure, but I had heard that at, at his peak he was making about five hundred thousand dollars a year. So that's that's a yeah, that's a so. which is not money. a small number by any means. Let's continue letting the big duck boy talk. Tomorrow, here. when they take mortgage out, I'll have about two thousand mortgage to live off of until the twentieth, when I get paid again from YouTube. So I'm just going to live off of seven hundred dollars, and I'll probably sell some cards along the way, and use that money to make ends meet as well. I have a credit card with them that I owe six hundred dollars on. And on top of that, I stole $163,000 on my house. I think my net worth is zero. Once you pull the equity out of the house, 
get rid of the house debt, sell off all my collectibles, and pay off all my debts, I think that puts me at zero dollars. Why aren't the collectible cards up? Oh, it is actually collect 29,500 mm -hmm. collectibles, right? So Boogie has worked out that is through his, his own math that his assets and liabilities cancel each other out and his technical net worth is zero dollars. Exactly zero. <laughs> so we're off to a good start. I'm going to go out on a limb here. I don't think that's true. Uh, I Probably think not. Boogie has, I think he has money tucked away elsewhere. And this is just for the sake of continuing to be like I... the spectacle of, oh, poor, pitiful, look at this kind of thing going on with me. More victimhood stuff is my... I, uh, prediction. I, wanna, I just can't I, I can't imagine a world I, I know where you're coming from Jackson I just can't imagine a world where someone who enjoyed that level of success somehow squandered every single penny of it you're about to find out apparently <laughs> uh, you're about to find out how it exactly happens don't worry but before we get to where the money went I just pulled this clip because he sounds like such a fucking creep listen to his voice but my best feature this is the one the ladies love I call it my meat apron. I have two <laughs> meat curtains. There's a second one. I have two oh my glorious God. meat curtains. Oh, thank God. It's still there. I don't like showing it to people. Oh, this hair. People don't like oh. seeing it. So that's why I'm going to die alone. <laughs> 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 that's just more sad than anything actually it is but the is way it he delivered though, it he's... it's like a line from an adult is... swim show yeah, yeah. it's a lot yeah. of you're, you're going to notice a theme as always with boogie is that hey i'm pathetic look how pathetic i am and he leans into it so hard he, he, but yeah. yeah yeah he does so during this part, uh, I was watching this with my girlfriend, or at least I was watching it in the room my girlfriend was it trying to go to sleep in, and she looked over at me, <laughs> and she said, "She said, didn't didn't he have a gastric bypass surgery? <laughs> how 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 yes, is he, he did? How, how is he uh, like more fat than he was last year if he literally doesn't have like a stomach?" And I had no answer. Sheer <laughs> I don't willpower. Know. He has definitely packed on more uh, since the bypass, right? I'm not crazy. That's pretty. Yeah, pretty yeah, which is visual. impressive. He should try his pick now. Anyway, where did all the money go? Well, it turns out hookers. And for some reason, this guy decided to wine and dine them all. I am a former sex worker escort, and Boogie2988 was one of my clients from LA. And I get a message on this website. You can probably guess which one from this guy who looked a lot like Boogie. It was I took women on vacations, and I forty thousand per year. And I took them to like Disneyland and shit. Wait, wait, he you missed dinner, it. He took them to like Disneyland and shit. He took them to he Disneyland. He got me a purse that we were talking about. That's just a gentleman, chivalry. Yeah, chivalry. He got me a couple gift the cards. The sexiest place on earth. Spent well over five thousand on just that night. Which is amazing. So he buys her. Gift cards, dinner, sure, whatever, hotel, Why purse. What? <laughs> Why gift what? cards? Is she Why, like an yeah. Indian tech scammer? <laughs> <laughs> Why does it have to be a five hundred dollar hotel? <laughs> and why Disneyland? There's another one in there. Four hundred dollars on dinner for two people. Jesus well, he Christ! He just went oh, to a nice she... restaurant. Like that's yeah, that, yeah. Like, I know, but the, the, good. That's no, a and lot. a nice hotel. Uh, nice hotels are like at least five hundred dollars. Yeah, this is all just him. Like he treated these hookers like queens. Yeah, yeah it, it's very sure. unnecessary it, and over the yeah. top. But I don't understand the gift card angle at all. Yeah, <laughs> like, when, <laughs> when did that come up on the Spotify? <laughs> it's how she accepted payment. Oh, by like, the way, Andrew. Uh, as far as the restaurant fees, she does explain in the documentary that he always ordered two entrees. Ah, there it is. So there it is. Yeah. Entrees are cheap though, aren't they? I, well, I mean, I just, I, I can see that even still though, it's probably just nice restaurants. I, the gift cards, I can't yeah. even process. He's like, all right, and here's your $500 Best Buy <laughs> gift card. Thanks for the evening, madam. It makes <laughs> <Yeah>. no sense. <laughs> like, what, what is it? What is it? They're escorts, right? They're, they're paid. They're paid to yes. like. Are escorts? Do they have sex? Like, are they yeah. the sex ones as well? Yeah. Yeah. That's so, the yeah, like, I think it's the whole thing. Again, right? like all all of this beyond the dinner, I guess, and maybe the hotel's like super unnecessary. 
oh well and the escort fees <laughs> but like uh like yeah gift cards and shit like that like why you're you're gonna have you've paid all of them this is unnecessary sex. Well, yeah, yeah it's it just it's prostitution. You just pay them the fee and you have sex. That's literally it's then and there. It's not anyway. Why does he pay all these women? Well, because he deserves these women. Yes, this is the line I loved. I also want to point out you can't you'll only see it on video. But Kaya, I appreciate your file names. You named this one Pay Pig Idiot. It's pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he is. He's, he's paying five hundred dollars in gift cards. <laughs> okay, let's continue. It's not a revelation. I like beautiful <laughs> women. I like to hang out with beautiful women. Fuck beautiful women. We all do. I never got to do that. <laughs> the women I dated were pretty, sure. But they were like Arkansas eights, <laughs> not LA tens. Ugh. With sugaring, I got to fuck some LA tens, and I think that's cool. <laughs> that, I think that's he, he cool. just sounds he sounds <laughs> so insufferably douchey there. Yeah, he oh just my, sounds yeah, like a dick. Oh my god. I know. Wow. I know. This guy used to be called the Mr. Rogers of YouTube. Yeah. You, people used to think he was so friendly. What he just said is extremely conceited and extremely dickish. Chauvinistic oh more so than anything. Yeah. <laughs> like that's like fucking brutal. My, well, also, wow. oh no, an Arkansas an eight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and Arkansas eight, buddy. Do you uh, have you seen yourself in the mirror? You should be lucky yeah. for like a, a one yeah. from any state. It, it's also missing the point. It's also missing the criticism entirely. People aren't chastising you for wanting to sleep with beautiful women, Boogie. They're chastising you for spending all this money to do it and then still being like, "Oh, I just got to keep doing it." If it was a one and done thing, fine. But I he just keeps it. doing it. What for? Yeah. Yeah, well, because because he's an internet celebrity, or he has all this money. Like is he's that entitled he he to it, it. exactly. Yeah, exactly. It's the yeah, entitlement. Yeah, exactly. It's so well, disgusting. We're, dude, we're gonna get to the entitlement. It's so annoying. Good. Yeah, it ties it. It ties so deeply in his like personality and stuff. It's like the um, entitlement is central. Well, he did make an incredible Francis video that day, so he did true, earn it. True. Yeah. 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 Very yeah. true. No, it's subtle, but if you pay attention, you'll notice that Boogie is fat, and she brings up the sex. Oh! <laughs> Overall, the experience, and I don't mean to fat shame or anything, but there was rolls upon rolls upon rolls, and <laughs> it took me a lot of time to find a stick. I am now married with two kids, and sleeping with Boogie is one of the reasons I quit sex work. Good for you. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> the gift cards weren't enough. Boogie saved this woman's life, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> he traumatized her so hard she dropped out. The stakes and the miracles. <laughs> Actually scared straight right there. <laughs> Literally like, all right, I'm getting out of this industry ASAP. <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> all right, so, well, at least she says no fat shaming, but <clears throat> I don't know if you guys noticed this too, but Boogie, even though he is fat, he's kind of haughty about it. And he fat shames I a woman. I think this girl's really cute. Oh, yeah. Yeah. She's definitely a little thicker than I necessarily would always go for, but there's nothing wrong with that. Oh, you piece of shit. <laughs> oh, so I deserve no. to go to Disneyland with a beautiful girl, right? I deserve to go to, to New York and explore Times Square with a beautiful girl, right? Like, I deserve that. And I want that, and I've never had it. What the Ugh. fuck, man? What a complete lack of self awareness. This man just pointed out to us he has a second roll of fat under his roll of fat. And then not five <laughs> minutes later, he goes, oh, she's a little heavier than I go for. Can Fuck we, you, yeah, dude. Can we, put, can we put this in perspective, entirely in perspective? This guy just said that he lost $600,000 on crypto, spends $40,000 a year on prostitutes, lives uh, has rubber duckies around his bar and stuff like that, showed his two fat rolls, and then said that he deserves to be banked by an LA-10. Like, what? What? <laughs> oh my what God. is this disconnect? The entitlement. Oh, it's such wasted everything, too. He could have gotten away with this if he just kept his mouth shut. His channel still, after all this, has 4 million subscribers. If he just didn't tell people this shit... He could have had this sleazy lifestyle oh, it's, he it's, wanted. No, it's it's beyond repair. It's beyond repair. There's no repair. Yeah, we've talked about this a lot. He legit, Twitter literally ruined this guy. Like yeah. uh, he couldn't help himself it's but Twitter share and every. Reddit. Yeah, Twitter and yeah. Reddit, but like he could not help but share every single yeah like facet of his life. But he was still a bad person at the core. I think. Yeah.
in real life, he's still ashamed of being uh, perceived as broke by all the people in the city, which is why he still shills out money. I'm selling Distances. magic cards on whatnot. I'm selling collectibles on eBay. I'm selling arcade machines locally. I'll sell it all. And I'm gonna sell enough to help with mortgage, but I'm also gonna sell enough to be able to play magic tonight. Cause I don't want people wondering why I'm not there. I don't want people like knowing I'm broke. Like that's embarrassing. I can't afford $30 to play magic. So I'm spending 30 bucks to play magic tonight. Boogie, do you know how the internet works? Like all, all of those people are gonna hear you're broke eventually because you're spilling it on a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Let me step in with an expert opinion as well. Having used to play Magic and gone to card stores regularly, you do not want the approval of those people. You do not need <laughs> the approval of those people. Trust me. Well, I don't know about yeah, his... Yeah. Well, another thing is, I don't know about his local card shop, but at mine here, you can just, like, ask them for a deck, like a pre-con, and they'll let you play yeah. for the night. You don't have well, to no, spend I think money he, to play it. No, I think he. I think he was saying, like, you have to buy tickets he's probably doing a draft oh. or something where you have to buy entrance okay, maybe yeah but yeah, either way okay. either way if your life comes down to i need the approval of random schmucks at my local card store <laughs> you're not doing great he's clearly got no like an excuse uh, to play magic you know he, he can't yeah. say no to things he, he definitely can't say no to things it's him jumping around in logic to justify oh i can spend this purchase on recreation mm -hmm. i can play in this hobby i can feel fine about it what's the term when you've like got no like you, you're bad at um not spending money like what's that term compulsive, compulsive spending Low impulse control. yeah he, he's yeah impulse control issues yeah that's, yeah. that's it yeah yeah anyway so he's trying to sell uh, we should have been scribing these clips a bit more. Sorry, audio listeners. He's holding a Mario Pikachu deck of playing cards of something that he's trying to sell. So he's, he's now he's hat in hand. He's hat in hand begging at the mercy, at the feet of this Goliath and Chad okay, card player so trying to buy them. I need from you about $1,000 to make mortgage. So I need you to pick out like $1,000 for the stuff. Like there's a couple of cradles in there. Mm -hmm. There's a city of traders in there. Well, I could do 200 a piece on this. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> that one got Charlie. I heard the cat <laughs> the clip. That was like a Pawn Stars moment. Best yeah. I can do is 200, but <laughs> and he's like, well, excuse me. What? It's my cards, though. <laughs> I like how he towers, or, yeah, towers over him. Like, this the negotiating know, table yeah. as well. It's great. Yeah, the classic boss tactic of like, my guest is going to have the lower seat. So I just subconsciously, they're going to see him, yeah. me as the bigger man. Um, I called this one. Is $200 a card good? Is oh, that good for me? Yes, magic? it's super good. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he, well, he I continues no to explain no that of magic. these are like, well, he says these are special whatever editions. I, I looked up the card that he's talking about, which is City of Traders. Uh, if it's in good condition, it can go for about 300 so a card store mm. buying it for 200 makes total sense. That's pretty solid, okay. yeah. Yeah. So why was Boogie so, like, upset then? He probably expected full value for the card from a card store, which is the stupidest fucking thing you can ever think. They will never pay you full value. He upfront said, he upfront gave him, like, uh, a target. He needs $1,000 for mortgage immediately, mm -hmm. like, putting a, a responsibility on this man to keep Boogie alive by giving him $1,000, basically. <laughs> If only he didn't spend all his years using all of his money on collectibles and trinkets like that and instead actually use the money to like pay off the mortgage. Yeah, also, the front went out the window completely, didn't it? The, I don't want people to know that I'm broke. Also, my mortgage is due. I'm going to be homeless. Please buy my Pikachu cards. <laughs> oh, my God. Um, telling, the, telling the person he's trying to negotiate to that he's extremely desperate. I know. <laughs> and will take I know. anything. He's also trying to do it with a card store, which is the worst place you can sell your cards. They will give you the worst fucking deal. Well, where are you meant to sell it then? I, I don't know what else you would sell it. Uh, eBay, eBay, I guess. Yeah. Online, there's tons of online card selling stores, and stuff sells there quick, like within hours. Well, the thing is shipping, so that's probably why yeah. he's doing this. That way, he doesn't have to deal with like shipping and all of that to avoid that cost. Yeah, and like I scams, suppose. I guess yeah. maybe. Speaking he of shipping, can we? Friends. Sorry, real oh. quick, can we talk about <laughs> things that will get shipped straight to your door to help you throughout your life? Mm -hmm. Just real quick, just yeah, before we dude. dive back into this cesspool, if you will. 
So something that you can have shipped straight to your door. In fact, you don't even need it shipped at all is a healthier body. Thanks to FitBod. If you want to get fit, get in better shape, not turn out like certain certain online personalities who seem to squander their health, I'm not going to name names, you're going to want to use FitBod. And in fact, it circumvents needing something sent to your door at all because it is entirely on your phone. It is a fitness tracking app that will help you create custom workouts based entirely on your goals, experience, and most importantly, available equipment. You don't need workout equipment sent to your door. You don't need to set up a gym. You realistically don't even have to have a gym membership because FitBod has thousands of different workouts and many of them body weight only. There's really very little excuse for you to find the routine that will fit you the best. I'm of the personal belief that every human being on this planet should do something physically active to some degree to your capacity it's a shame to have such a nice body and not put it to use and with fitbod the app will intelligently vary your intensity and volume of workouts so you will always be ready to work out when it's time it's going to mix things up as well give you all sorts of different rep schemes supersets all that sort of good stuff to make sure your exercise is different and exciting every time it's never been easier to get the results you've always wanted to check out fitbod and become a strong boy or girl. Get 25% off of your subscription at fitbod.me slash official. That's F-I-T-B-O-D dot M-E slash official. And with your new strong calloused hands, your rippling pectorals, you can pick up the television remote and turn it on and go to your favorite streaming service with your smart television, because that's what I'm going to wager most people do. Except... No matter how large you get, no matter how proteined out you are, you're not going to be able to flex your way to getting each and every piece of entertainment from your streaming service. I don't give a shit how much you can bench. You're going to be missing out on content that you're paying for. Why let them scam you? Why let them win you over? When you can use ExpressVPN and change your country of origin on the internet to get access to each and every piece of media given to you by streaming services. Parasite is on South Korean Netflix. The entirety of The Office is on United Kingdom Netflix. I believe the other example they keep coming at me with is Lord of the Rings is in New Zealand. And I give that one to Jackson because it's right next door. It doesn't matter. It is. There's tons and tons of licensing rights and bullshit issues on the internet these days. And ExpressVPN will let you get around all of them. There's even websites I remember from doing some surfing for projects where it would say, Oh, sorry, this page is only available in Scotland. Just weird stuff these days, thanks to copyright. Doesn't matter. Hulu, BBC, iPlayer, YouTube... Tons of places have region lock stuff, and ExpressVPN is the best VPN to get you around it. Works on all your devices, your phone, your media, your smart TV. Sorry, your media console, your smart TV. It also will secure and encrypt your data in case any looky loos want to take a peek. You can tell them no. If you want access to hundreds of new shows, use the link right now, expressvpn.com slash official, and you can get an extra three months for free. That's expressvpn.com slash official for three months for free. Expressvpn.com slash official to learn more. And now back to Boogie Ruins His Life. <laughs> Back to Boogie Ruins Game Night with his friends because he announces Aww. to them that he can no longer pay for all the food that they consume. <laughs> okay, so I have a million dollar question. I was debating about it. Every Saturday we get together. <laughs> mm -hmm. Every Saturday I order what? Pizza, chicken fingers, tacos. Those are the things I normally get us, right? Oh, very healthy. Like, I normally mm. spend like $100, $150 every Saturday, like fetus. And. Like, I showed them my bank books today, and I'm not like, I've never wanted to burden you guys with this, but like, I'm at a point where saving $300 a month would be useful. I mean, we've been start month. cooking. You know, 150 bucks times four yeah. every weekend. Start cooking. 600 bucks, first of all, not 300. He's not going to cook. I'm telling you for years <sighs> that Stop dreaming. we don't care it's about the street that much. Okay. Yeah. Like, don't, like, don't get me wrong. I like. Oh, having snacks and soda when I'm over here because I don't eat those at my house. Yeah, you don't but look like you eat we, those. I mean, we definitely said it throughout <laughs> the years. Like, you don't 
have I, to feed us, but I know you, you, have, you I do know. it anyway. So when are we gonna start bringing girlfriends around? <laughs> what the fuck? What does that have to do with anything? <laughs> <laughs> when are we gonna get? When are we? When are we gonna start having some pussy around here? <laughs> What the fuck was that? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna be very charitable here with what I think he meant. Maybe like maybe he means like so the girlfriends can cook us food because I feel like that's what's in his head. Like girls that's do the so cooking. That's so sad. That's so sad that that's maybe. charitable. How are people still in his corner? He says just blatantly <laughs> mean shit. I think that's what he's getting at. Like I can see no other explanation for just randomly asking. Or even worse, he expects them to pay for food. Oh, or that, yeah. Yeah. But then there's more mouth to feed, so more costly food. <laughs> when are we going to bring girls that aren't escorts? And one of the guys just stares at him. Also, when are we going to start bringing girlfriends around that aren't hookers? Oh. <laughs> that's just, all I've brought around for five years. Bro, that, that's Jesus you who does Christ. that, not us. Oh my god, dude. <laughs> um, so it was even worse, I see. So what the... No, he's just asking about getting some pussy in the room. I, I, think. I really, yeah. I think really like... didn't know it was this bad. Like, Jackson, you've come to us with Tales from the Boogie lore, and I've sat here and I've clapped my hands and giggled, but seeing it in person, <laughs> seeing it in my face, it's just, this is such a cesspool of existence. He's so silly. Jesus. He's just a piece of he's shit. He's so silly. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. And also, this is just Boogie masks off now. This is what he's yeah. always been like. How are people still in his corner? How does he still have diehard fans on YouTube? I don't get it. Well, he's going to win you over, Andrew. Check this out. This is totally on topic. This was literally a smash cut to the next scene. The N word is just a word. <laughs> if going you on? guys left and these cameras weren't rolling and I was sitting here alone in the dark and I said the N word, there's no magic power to it. What the so fuck? So say it. Oh no, I'm not going to say it on camera where it could hurt somebody. I like yeah, the turn, turn humor. The I camera like dark off, jokes. Mike. I say yeah, so I can shit. say it all I, I want. I think the darker something is. Cancer, rape, murder, child abuse. The darker okay, that it is, is pretty funny. the more important it is to make jokes about it. <laughs> You're not a hero, Boogie. Just, Jesus yeah. Christ. What the fuck is he yapping about? <laughs> you discover what stand-up comedians <laughs> discovered in the 70s. It's important to joke about controversial yeah, but issues. The, the, okay. the difference is those comedians had like tact and and like wit yes. about them, and they were making Boogie a just point. Saying the n word is funny. The apparently. difference between the difference between good edgy shock comedy is they made a point. They made political opinions. Boogie just wants an excuse to say the n word and other terrible things. Yeah, Charlie. Charlie. The funny part yeah. to me is, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. Did, Charlie, did did you notice that? He, the logo on his shirt is the Godslab logo. <laughs> Wait, no. Oh my god, it is. No, it's, it's, it's dangerous. What, what it's from, it's well, we, we already knew this, but what that's from is Skyrim. It's the, it's the, uh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's why it says we know. Of course it's Skyrim. Why does he have the energy also of like a little child lying on the ground talking to an adult? It's like, yeah, I want to have cereal. It's like a children's sleepover. That's I want to so believe weird. it's because he was tired from a long day of filming, even though he probably did nothing. So he's like, can we just do this next one where I'm lying down in a bed? My, my favorite yeah. part is him going like, well, the N-word, it doesn't have a magical power, you know? It's only bad because people give it that strength. Okay, say it then. Oh, no, I'm not going to kill people. They hurt people by saying it. Um, <laughs> but it seems Boogie only is this way because he... Uh, has trolls on Reddit who go after old clips of it's his. Never his own fault. Yeah, I know. Well, no, and of he never not. gets away from it. I really, I still can't get over the last clip. To be honest, I'm still stuck on him just saying, <laughs> "When are we bringing <laughs> girlfriends?" Over? One guy <laughs> spent like a month of his time gathering every link, every video clip, everything I'd ever said or done since 1998, and he compiled it into this one huge mega thread. It's like 10, 15 pages long. And every time my name would get mentioned on Reddit moving forward, they would all link to that mega thread. Abuse his well, wife. These people on Reddit began to bombard Mox my racial sponsor. minorities, he actually did. <laughs> okay, so to, li to read this to audio listeners, just, just yeah, one second. To, I've read the read mega the thread. I've read the mega thread that he's talking about ages ago. I read it when it was coming out. Also, they spelled Holocaust wrong there. Anyway, I I, I read the um the the thread and it, it like ninety ninety nine percent of it is like just honest like 
clips of things that he's done and said. It's like evidence back stuff. And now that it's deleted, he he I think he got on Reddit's back. I don't know this for sure, but I feel like it's true. I feel like he reported it so much that the thread eventually got deleted. And then he was able to kind of like manipulate how it was viewed. But I've I've read the thread before and it was like ninety nine percent accurate. Which is just crazy now that he's painting it as this just something that's completely wrong. Read the list of things that are on screen according to the Reddit thread. Okay, so apparently he abused his wife. I don't necessarily believe that. I believe he probably emotionally abused her, definitely. But that that kind of makes it sound like he physically beat her or something. I don't believe that. Supported child abusers, had attraction to minors, mocked racial minorities, lied about mental health diagnoses, claimed good things came from the Holocaust, Threatened he again. That was there's a clip of it. Boogie <laughs> threatened to kill his own dog. Used his friend's death to promote new channel. Made fun of a child for having divorced parents. Threatened suicide to guilt fans and to support. Oh my god, these are all true. Faked harassment emails to gain sympathy. Flirted with his friend's widow after his death. Misused Patreon funds on personal <laughs> toys. Manipulated his sugar babies and girlfriends. Literally every single thing there probably is true. Like, and this and he's saying that it's not true. There were clips. There were evidence of these things. You can find He's links saying to that this people, stuff. Well, I'll let him. To make me look as bad as possible. Every time I got a new sponsor, they would bombard me. And uh, eventually they dropped me. And so his sponsors would periodically get these videos and they would drop him, which is why he just does not earn any money anymore. The next clip is one of my favorites. Uh, he sprains his ankle walking. Uh, I, I might have... Sprained it or the bathroom. it or something. I was walking to yep. the bathroom in there. And... <laughs> no, he's waddling. <laughs> there was a loud snap sound. And things kind of shifted in one direction. And now my foot is swelling into my shoe. And it hurts really badly. <laughs> what happened? How did that happen? <laughs> Just walking to the bathroom. What, was he galloping? Like, I don't understand. Have you ever walked happened. to the he's bathroom, fat. Charlie? It's pretty hard. He's fat, yeah. It's, well, no. Well, yeah, but way, even still, obviously. like... It must have been like a slippery floor, I guess. I don't know how he just like lost his balance on the way there. No, he didn't lose his balance. Ankle. He just said he st- he stepped and then it gravity snapped. lost it for him. Yeah, Charlie, those legs are not made of concrete. There's only so much weight that a human leg can support. And not only that, I, I guess mean, even aside from his feet, Boogie's health is in bad shape. And he tells us, oh, what? Oops, wrong clip. Oh, this is the clip I saw. Here's everything that's wrong with Boogie. Low testosterone. Testicular hypogonadism, sleep apnea, swelling due to blockages of lymphatic flow, seboric eczema, chronic back pain, protein in urine. That's from kidney damage, folks. So what I'm reading, (laughs) what I'm reading in my expert diagnosis as a medical professional is lose weight, lose weight, lose weight. Oh, oh, and lose weight would help with that one, too. It continues. It continues, you fat shaming dick. Uh, high blood pressure, <laughs> history of gastric bypass, intestinal malabsorption, vitamin D sufficiency, because like most gamers, I hate the sun, morbid obesity, <laughs> oh. major depressive disorder, major anxiety disorder, history of diabetes <laughs> mellitus, blood pulling in veins, varicose veins of the legs with complications. Degeneration of lumbar or lumbosacral interver- intervertebral disc. That means my back don't work so good. History of basal cell carcinoma. That's cancer. And of course, I can't breathe so good. So asthma and allergies as well. Why does he throw the phone like he's a badass? Yeah, that's, it's that's a mic like drop, a 90% maybe. of his net worth. He shouldn't throw his phone. <laughs> but he throws it like Charlie just said, like a mic drop. Yeah, yeah. like what? It, it's not impressive, Boogie. <laughs> You're fucking so unhealthy. Like, oh well, that's God. the thing with him. He thinks this is like I'm gonna list all of the reasons that I am pathetic. Feel bad, don't you? Isn't it crazy just how sad and pathetic I am? Just how sick I yeah. am? Feel bad for me. He to has him, to think it's fun. Perk. He has to think it's fun. He has to think all of this is a lot of fun. No, it's not. He doesn't. I, I doubt he thinks it's fun. It's just like the only strategy he knows to get like attention and feel good about himself is if other people feel bad about There's him. There's got to be some level of in his game. He goes, oh, yeah, if I do this, this will make me look really, really like something like a piece of work. Sympathetic. Yeah. 
Like, yes, there is that angle of he's trying to play up sympathy, but he has to enjoy finding the most sympathetic outcome, you know? Going, aha, now I've got Well, it doesn't mean that he thinks them. it's fun having asthma yeah, and allergies think, or yeah. anything. Yeah. He's just more addicted yeah. to the sympathy he gets. And let's look yeah. at this yeah. clip, though. He just listed off a whole list of ailments and illnesses, and he throws the phone like he's a badass. In his mind, he's probably going, take that, haters. Yeah, look at how pathetic I am. Yeah, that's right. I bet it's something more like, so take that. You sh you should feel bad for not liking me because of all yeah. of these things. Yeah, take that, that's haters. That's feel. what that is. Take like, that. You're shitting no, on like, me. Now here's why. He's throwing his... He's throwing his phone going like, look how bad my life is. Feel bad for me. That's what that's what I think. That's how yeah. I feel. I'm taking it as he's throwing the phone because he's like, look at all these problems I have that justifies the way I act. It's probably a mix of both, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This I think this is somewhere around the documentary now where the guy uh cuts to himself, the documentary maker Mike, and says, mm -hmm. dude, this is just too much of a bummer for me. And he arranges Boogie an interview with one of those agencies that like help you get a job you go talk mm -hmm. to them and then they try to kind of figure out like what your malfunction is and how they can help An employment you agency, get a job yeah. so it's not yeah it's not itself a job interview but they just try to help you here's a boogie listing all of his accomplishments and qualifications for potential jobs and then physically uh, i i am morbidly obese i have no references uh no work history and no education and when you Google my name, you might see rumors that I beat my ex-wife and I am also a pedophile. Should mention I'm also a felon. Okay. Uh, What's the nature of your felony? Aggravated assault. How old is it? About two years. This is okay. like a sitcom. It's like something I see on a well, TV show. I know. Yeah, I thought this was just like a skit that he was doing when I watched yeah. it originally. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> yeah, Kaya cut off huh? quite a bit of it, but basically in the beginning, he's still going through other like awful things. And at the very end, she goes, do you really think that mentioning your porn industry history I, I is have smart it, for it. a job interview? And you're using weight and disability. I can't, I can't, I can't. If that is the attitude that you're going to have when you approach everything, then you can't and you won't. I did work in the porn industry for the better part of seven years, so, uh, I mean... Be real with me. Do you really think it would be a good idea to go to a real interview and reference porn? It depended on the job, I would think. God, he's <laughs> such a fucking creep, man. I hate him. <laughs> he has no self-awareness. That's so, no, so he, fucking funny. I, he's got to be like he's got to be like self-sabotaging it just so that he doesn't have to get a job. Oh yeah, right? for sure. So now we get to into the hateable uh, the reasons why he's so annoying and hateable. I don't know if you guys remember. At some point, he called into I think Keemstar's podcast, and I don't know if it was them or Keemstar's co-host or whatever. And they said, "Boogie, you need to get a normal fucking job. You're not too good for a normal job." And he said, "Well, I can't. I I don't. You know, I'm trying. I'm not saying I am too good for a job." Here he is in the documentary saying he's just simply too good for a job. I, I'm not gonna walk into some job when I have four million subscribers on YouTube. I'm one of the original YouTubers. What I'm going to do instead is go back to making content go back to telling stories and entertaining people and making money doing it. And you want to check back with me in a couple of months, let's see how things are going. All right? And everything went downhill, as you all know. But the, did you hear? I'm not going to... I'm not just going to walk into a job, he says. Yeah, for audio listeners, the documentarian is the one listening to that voicemail and the look of exasperation yeah. on his face the whole time is unreal the man just clearly is fed up can you believe this idiot can you believe this idiot yeah. can you believe what you're hearing right now cam and i'm not gonna just walk into a job i'm one of the first youtubers you're not good at it yes you have four million subscribers but that's because you were had None of first them mover advantage you've been there yeah. from the beginning but you're clearly not good at it and what i'm saying being a YouTuber isn't just, I was there from the start. It's also, oh, the rules change every day and you have to adapt. You sucked at that last part. He, he sucks. He definitely sucks at content. He, his image was all that he had other than the friends. And yeah. stuff. Like the, the friendly kind of, you know, goofball that you would want to listen to. But now that the facade is gone and he's just like a, a straight up evil person, I'd say. Just like and super how manipulative. Long, 
how long has that been going on? Like five years where he's been on this downward spiral? Like at what point does he realize it's not working since anymore? It's all it's all just um, No, no, there's no way it's been since twenty sixteen. It probably wouldn't start till like twenty eighteen, twenty nineteen, probably would be the my down guess. the downward trend. Yeah. Well, not so much that, but more like his mask coming off. Well, it happened pretty quickly after the divorce, I think, and that was, I think, in 2016. I could be wrong, but I feel like... Actually, no, you're right, because we had him on the show... Wait, we had him on the yeah. show after after his divorce, which was 2017. Yeah. So, yeah, I think it was 2016. We did. But regardless... Oh. It, it's really not important specifically. What's important is all of what he has now on YouTube is inheritance. It's not growth. It's not anything he generates it's well, just it's what he's growth. pulling in from his old audience that's it so w at what point does he realize i'm not producing anything it's all just things that i had left over you know trickling down trickling away i mean it's yeah. people hate it's 90 percent hate people hate watching him like me and like 10 percent people <laughs> who just don't care i guess yeah and somehow still fall for his manipulations well, if you read the comments, I just read the comments on his most recent upload, which was the house tour. A lot of them are just always wishing him better, like, yeah. like rooting for him to get better. So I think it's like a lot of people hoping for like a satisfying conclusion to his story. Like he gets it together and everything's great. So I think it's a lot of people which holding he, on which to Which he does not deserve because when you watch this stuff, he's very clearly just a jerk. He's just actually a jerk. I'm telling you, he's not a good person. He's just nutty. I don't think he's ever been a good person. He's just a jerk. Speaking of being a jerk, now in the documentary, it's switched to his new girlfriend. She's a, she has a whole segment in this. As you might remember, he's now dating a 20-something, actually a, literally a 20-year-old, 20, I think. 20-year-old. And they met mm -hmm. when she was 18, apparently. Oh, God, and they're and just in time. This to say. I randomly hit him up on Instagram, and I told him that... And they have a screen of her typing on her phone and she says, Hey Boogie, I really love your content and I think you're super cute. You inspire me and just want you to let you know I'm always here for you. Uh, I, you know, I support Heart. him and that I'm always here for him and stuff. And so it, it started from there. I don't normally paper, respond to fans, but you're super cute too. And then there's a bunch of selfies doesn't of doesn't really add oh. up, right? It doesn't make sense on paper, but then practice and in reality, there was just something there. Now, even he can recognize the red flag of a 20-year-old girl yeah, who's I, into I someone question. like him. He's like, wait, that doesn't add up. <laughs> I have a very important question. Go ahead. Why is it that with all the cancel stuff and all of the like outrage on the internet of creators manipulating fans and, and working over younger fans, why are people not up in arms going, Boogie, you very clearly are just playing mind games with a very young fan of yours? Yeah, it's just, he has nothing left. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to explain why I thought the segment was genuinely unfunny and just sad. Um, Chad is saying she's a gold digger. It's actually way sadder than that no, because no, no, he's no, broke. No, no, no. So he, there's he no gold nothing. to dig, first of all. Um, there's a little segment here about how them talking about potential marriage, which, again, they've known each other for like two months. Three months. I think they've the been dating for three filmed. months. Yeah. Very cool. Oh, no. Whoops. At the time of this film, filming, yeah. I can see myself getting married to Boogie. I could definitely, I could definitely see us getting married. In fact, I, we may or may not have talked about it a little bit, and we may or may not sit around fantasizing about it and thinking about what it's going to look like. And and give cards I called everywhere. Your wife the other day, <laughs> and you loved it. All you the best so I there for it. If I proposed right now on camera, what would you do? I'd say yes. That's a good sign. He would say yes. <laughs> Jesus Which I, I don't know why he parents? even dangles that in front of her. Like, what do you think her parents? One day, are? who knows? She she talks about in the documentary that she was abandoned by her by her father. Growing up without a father figure has its challenges. You got spoiled uh, too much. Like you just don't have that 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 support system that you would the and together. the advice that you need, and so it's just difficult. I mean, who the fuck would say yes to Boogie? When she's no you 29 have, years younger than him, by the way, be. he's 49. And yeah. Yeah. here's where it gets sad. This is a girl who, fatherless, right? Fatherless young woman. And she just doesn't want to die. I don't alone. ever want to be alone. That's another thing. I'm just, I just, maybe that's why I have stuffed animals. I just, I don't ever want to be alone. And so it's just nice to have company. And 
that's pretty much the qualification that she seeks in a man is I don't want to be alone. Which no, is so issue. fucking sad. Like that's just, extreme, just so I feel so sad. genuinely bad for her. Well, it's definitely not the health a healthy foundation of a relationship to be both so mentally no. unstable that you're coping together. That sounds fucking terrible. This is gonna end poorly. If you date a man over twice your age with like two feet and an arm in the grave, barely holding on, the issue is he might die on you any moment. <laughs> He's the only one that I love and I care about, and there's only one of them. And so I'm not just gonna up and leave him for money, because money's an issue. Oh, uh, he was asking her, would you ever leave me if we become homeless? And she says no. Because I love him, and just imagining a life without him is difficult. <laughs> I mean, my biggest fear is dying on her. If I die in the next two or three years on her, that's just gonna ruin her life. And yet you're doing it. Yeah, and you're, you're in here. investing her into you. You're stringing her along. You are gonna die in the next fucking 10 years, probably. And she's still gonna be only 30. 20 years yeah. from now, she's gonna be 40. He's so selfish. This is the same guy who <clears throat> just earlier in the video was like, hey, when are you guys gonna bring your girlfriends over? Uh, yeah, that aren't <laughs> escorts, <laughs> that aren't by hookers, the way. Yeah. yeah, bring the hookers over. He like he doesn't he doesn't care about her. He doesn't fucking care about anything more than just the the sex. Oh, I assume, or just like, or just companionship. That is the impression I get of Boogie. Yeah, all he views women as is like sexual conquest. Yes. which is why when he brought that up earlier, like when we bring the girls over, I really thought it's because he had this view of them that all they do is cook for him. So like, yeah, I don't want to spend money on food anymore. Bring your girlfriends over to cook for us. Like he, that is yeah. the impression I have of him. So I'm sure Kai has got the clip of her doing the housework coming up. Right? He he seems blatantly misogynistic. He literally does, yeah. Whether whether or not he'll directly admit to it, he just seems blatantly misogynistic. Like he's there are Absolutely. things he's not saying that he is like thinking about Dude, women. Again, it's it's not new. It's like like there's been clips of him talking about splaying open vaginas with scalpels and joking about that. And then <laughs> of, of course, the early two thousands and late nineties, he was a fucking porn. But he hosted a porn website. He's a webmaster on a porn site, and you should have read, read the comments that he was writing then. It was the most disgusting, like uh, just deplorable shit about women possible. And this was this was ten, fifteen years. He, he was he was in his thirties when he wrote that. It was like ten, fifteen years before the whole YouTube nice guy persona. He's Jesus. always been like this. Jesus Christ! I, as you know, I pay attention to Boogie somewhat i know quite a bit about him as much as jackson probably i would say that he's simply not the kind of man who would tell a young girl look this isn't right i'm not the right guy for you you're wonderful but no. 10 years from now i will be dead i think he thinks oh she's hot and when i go to disneyland with her all the guys are gonna look at me and be jealous i think that's literally just the extent of it he, flexing a chick in his arm Here's this fucking young, vulnerable, mentally ill girl who I can manipulate into doing whatever I want and I can behave however I want towards her and it's an easy source of sex. Yeah, she continues crying, by the way. He apologizes to her for being infinifat and dying soon. I really, really wish I had taken better care of my body. Yeah, I know. He still can. He still can. <laughs> I'll never be ready for it, but I know. Boogie lives like he's been dead for 30 years. I don't want you to be alone. <laughs> I want you to be alone. Okay. <laughs> I, bet he's, I bet he's like so happy internally right now. This is like... Yeah, this is like, what he wants. Yeah, Wait, so he bad just wants attention and yeah. sympathy. That is, Andrew is absolutely right, though. He talks as if he's a spirit who's already dead. Like, yeah, he, yeah. he talks as if it's already over. <laughs> like, Boogie. he can still take care of himself. It's not Boogie's too late. He's hallucinating him. <laughs> yeah, he's like a force ghost. His entire life for the last 20 years has been living like he's defeated, accepting defeat. That's his entire existence. It's the ghost of obesity past. <laughs> he's, stuck, he's stuck in limbo. Oh my god, dude. Move on, you're right. <laughs> uh, that's 100%. Like, I, I've never thought of it that way, but you are right. He literally acts as if he is already dead. Yeah. <laughs> Just a whiny ghost. There's no chance that he'd ever get better. 
No, like he, because he if you bring this to him, it. if you say any of this to him, Boogie, you talk like you've already died. You talk like you've given up. You don't try. He'll gonna he's gonna go. Do you think I want to be like this? I just have so much <laughs> yeah. to overcome, and it's hard. It's difficult for me to get over it. And it's oh god, you, you can't, you cannot help him. In the job interview segment, it's the same thing. It's where he's like constantly putting out that negative energy. He doesn't want to change. He doesn't yeah. want it. He doesn't want to be better. He likes this kind of I think, lifestyle. I think we need to go the reverse direction on Boogie. We need to fuck him up with drugs. Because we need to just give him a positive outlook on something. Spoiler alerts. That happens, actually. God damn I it. Clips. I know. The dumbest... Yeah, how, what a coincidence, Andrew. The dumbest fucking shit that you can come up with he is doing in real life and thinking it's gonna work. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Jesus So anyway, Christ. the girl cries and he isn't enough of a man to tell her, look, this isn't good right for you. I'm gonna break up with you. So they stay together and she's crying the whole time because she's just damaged because yeah. she's fatherless and she's sad and doesn't want to be alone. So Mentally he's gonna Ill, yeah. move she's off 20. of her. She's 20. She's 20. We're gonna get to the- Fuck. I, uh, she was 18 when they met. Uh, As you know, know what's hilarious about this, Andrew? Just wait. Uh, what's hilarious about this is like three months before they got together, he was ba he was bagging on Keemstar for also dating someone in her 20s. Like he made a whole Twitter thread or uh, Twitter. He was like replying on Twitter about how Keemstar is like abusing this girl or whatever. Or like it's irresponsible for him to date a 20 year old. And then like three months later, he's with a, he's with a 19, 20 year old himself. It's so fucking... Uh, he's such a hypocrite as well. It wouldn't be nearly as sad if her explicit goal wasn't I just don't want to be alone. I want someone to love me and somewhere in the world and just... She's stuck with this fucking idiot. Anyway, you guys remember the Keemstar fight that he set up uh, for Boogie yeah, and yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Wings of Redemption and Boogie didn't throw a single punch. He got jostled around a bit, got yes. bonked in the head and lost. And then he said, I got paid 10 grand for this. But I made nothing off of it because of all my expenses joining this thing. So he actually oh talks God. about what he, the money was spent on. So since you guys were here last, I did have a bit of a windfall, which bought me some time here. He's sitting in front of his like arcade machines, by the way, in his living room, and there's yeah. literally like 17 of okay, them. So and much waste which, of money. If he oh, sold all of them, he could make a pretty good chunk of change. Uh, the problem with that is I spent more than 10,000 getting that fight together. Meals, so by the time 2, all that was done. <laughs> right, so let's How go through flights. Fuck? 1,250, yeah. boxing lessons, 1,500, physical therapy, 2,000, MRI twice, 1,000 bucks, meals, 2,000 bucks, hotel, uh, 1,750, gloves and wraps, 150, boxing shorts, 350. What? Why do you need three hundred fifty dollar yeah. boxing shorts? And they didn't what? even work. Remember, they fell off him halfway through the fight. And also, boxing lessons. <laughs> You're right. You didn't learn a, how they to had punch to tape at all. Them. How did you spend <laughs> almost two grand on a hotel room for yourself? Well, the, these are these are made up numbers. Like, there's no such thing as a hundred and fifty dollar glove wrap. Like, I'm oh looking up God. even the highest end brands for glove wraps that you would have access to as just a normal consumer. I don't see anything well, that even goes above twenty five. Oh, oh, I thought it just, oh, maybe then. I thought it just said glove wrap. <laughs> I don't know shit. where the money went, but I absolutely do think that he spent all that $10,000 almost. Oh, yeah, he definitely yeah. did. Frivolous oh, bullshit. yeah. 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 Well, because yeah, that's, that's his sure. mindset, right? He goes, oh, I'm a big YouTuber with 4 million subs, and this is my big comeback, my, my event. People are going to be watching me. Why would I stay in a cheap hotel? That's not that's not right. I'm a big celebrity right now. I have to stay in a fancy hotel. It goes even more. It goes even more simple. It's just I deserve it. Well, that's no, it. it's it's because of what he said early in the documentary. He wants to extrude that image. He wants to go look. I'm staying in this fancy hotel because I'm a big YouTuber. I can tell everyone about it. Yeah, I I stayed in the Ritz Carlton for that fight because you know I'm a big fucking YouTube guy. Yeah, I spent two thousand dollars on five meals somehow. Yeah, it's insecurity. All of this stems from him being so concerned with other people think. It's nuts. I also don't understand how this event is like comped. You're supposed, this is not supposed to be taken out of your paycheck. Generally, the venue provides you with the hotel and all this stuff and transportation and such. They don't just go, hey, here's barely enough for you to break even if you join this fight. Let's look right? at the big yeah, red flag, that's though. just being stupid True. for accepting. Let's look at the biggest red flag, though. The man somehow spent more on his meals than his hotel room. That's fucking impressive. 
Like, how do you even do that? I assume he was saying meals throughout the entire training process, maybe. Still. Like over the course maybe. of the month or whatever, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. How many days was he there? I, I don't, know. don't know. I think there is a chance, anyway. though, like the promotion maybe didn't like comp all of the travel and the stay. I think there is a chance that that's accurate. They made him pay yeah. out of pocket, maybe. And the 10K yeah. is yeah, definitely that's what I'm low, saying. but that's. Which is, that's his fault for being too, yeah. st- just dumb enough to accept those terms, mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Actual talents wouldn't accept that. They wouldn't go, why the fuck am I paying for my own hotel? You're the one that invited me. You're paying me, stupid. Um, anyway, his monthly expenses. We get a new list. My health insurance is 800 I have $500 worth of medical bills. I have $500 worth of utilities. I, I pay for doctor's visits, physical therapies, labs constantly. I still have to pay for the car that I drive. I still have to pay for car insurance. I still have to pay for health insurance. Diablo 4 came out. I had to buy it. Uh, Final Fantasy <laughs> came out. I had to buy it. Tears of the Kingdom came out. I had to buy it. That's $400 worth of video games. Right there. What do you mean you have what? to buy it? <laughs> you, like, you like how casually he snuck those in there? I actually burst out laughing. This was that nice palate cleanser after the sad girlfriend stuff. He goes, yeah, my mortgage, my car insurance, Diablo 4. It's like, whoa, whoa, wait. <laughs> One of these is not like the it, other. It doesn't even end there. He puts Final Fantasy 16 and Tears of the Kingdom on there as well. Well, it, he also puts the deluxe edition of Final Fantasy 16 on there. <laughs> Also, I bet that I can go on like, uh, I don't know, true trophies or whatever, look at his achievement, like his PlayStation profile. And I've done this in the past for games that he's bought and talked about on, on Twitter. He usually only plays them for like an hour or, or so and never well, touches them again. Well, let's start from the beginning. How the fuck do you spend $800 a month on health insurance? What I the mean, fuck? He's, he's mobile well, he's, obese. I mean, what do you mean? Yeah, he's sick, always visiting. Yeah. Oh, yeah. it's just uh oh, it's just uh, yeah. I don't know how you I mean life also gets the, that don't bad, they set man. your health insurance according to your health at the moment? I mean, what health insurance is going to see this guy in their office and go, "Yeah, we'll give you the cheap plan." True. Yeah, I'm also I'm surprised that he has health insurance <laughs> in general. I I I wasn't saying I don't believe it. I'm just saying it's more like how bad is your life that that's yeah, the yeah, fucking yeah. thing, you know? Again, I know, like I, uh, I don't believe he was the making, grocery prices either. Neither he was making. Oh yeah, eight hundred a month. No way. He was making. He was making um five hundred thousand dollars a year. How does he still have car payments? How does he still yeah. have a mortgage at all, man? Yeah, very true. Crazy. Uh, that, that's the uh, again. I bet he rationalizes himself into buying these video games. To you know, well, I'm a streamer. These, these are work mm-hmm. expenses. Yeah. I have to buy Diablo Four, but. I don't know if what Jackson is saying is true that uh, if he doesn't even play them, which yeah, from, no. from most of the streams that I see, he doesn't actually play games. He just plays with his magic cards, doesn't it? It probably yeah, also yeah. goes with the impulse control thing. I don't know if he still streams. Doesn't he? Or not. I think he streams every now and then on YouTube, like rarely, but every now and then. It's very rare. But he, it's also got to go with the impulse control thing. I bet you there's a yeah. voice in his brain that goes, oh, I've had a really stressful week. I've had all this stuff I'm dealing with. I deserve a treat. Oh, yeah. he. I deserve to he buy Diablo says that at the beginning of the episode, he says, well, I have a TV and I need to unwind sometimes. And so exactly. if the sound my TV breaks, of course I go on Amazon and buy a new sound bar. Like, I, I have to have TV, and, and that's all. That's all impulse bullshit. There's so much free yes. entertainment on the internet these days. If he's paying for internet every month, which he is, he has access to thousands and thousands of hours of totally free entertainment. But he just has terrible impulse control. Yeah, I, think I also portion- just double checked. Sorry, just to double check his <laughs> must buy games. He didn't do anything with Final Fantasy 16 at all. <laughs> not a single video, not a single stream that I can find unless he oh scrubbed it. Oh my god, it. what a fucking so he, like I don't know what he's buying them for. Can you see if he even like put many hours? He also didn't do it? anything for I can check in a second. He also didn't do anything for Tears of the Kingdom either. And all he did for yeah. Diablo 4 was a rant and then a meme. Well, you have to buy it though, Charlie. He has to buy it. Yeah, I don't. He budgeted for dates, which look a twenty-year-old girl isn't gonna have the foresight to say, "Look, you are broke, and I would rather you not spend seven hundred and fifty bucks a month on me." But that's something that he should know, obviously. And wait a minute, he has that girl who they've already are said are apparently so close they're about to get married. 
if he talked to her and said, hey, I can't afford dates right now, she should say, I understand. Fine. That's what a fucking good relationship would. is. Jackson, what is his uh, PlayStation Yeah, username? I don't know. That's. I was hoping you'd be able to find it. I don't know. There's a couple Uber, people it's claiming Uber to be Wolf. him. I think it's Uber Wolf. That's the first one that comes up, but that can't be him because he's only played two games this year, which is Forspoken, which he got zero trophies on, which means he turned it on and turned it off, <laughs> and then Spider-Man 2, which he's got 11 trophies on. To be fair, knowing for Spoken, I too would just turn it on and turn it off. Yeah, I believe that for Forspoken. I know, I, I believe that's probably him, Charlie, so I, I doubt he's even played Final Fantasy 16. I... I, I find it so hard to believe. No fucking way. He's a fake nerd. Guys man. are gonna love this. His life is in shambles. He, his girlfriend is crying constantly that he's gonna die, that they're gonna be homeless. How does he fix this? Drugs. They found a shaman in the middle of ah. a forest to conduct mm -hmm. basically a seance with him and do shrooms with him and be his spirit guide. Mm. So when I heard this on screen... The, saw the text, I thought, oh, they must have found some Native American on a reservation somewhere grifting whiteies. But no, actually, the shaman is some fucking yuppie hipster cocksucker who just the the emotional stuff is going to come out, trauma is going to come out, but afterwards, your atoms are going to go back into their original positions. That's why. He'll be mind, body, and spirit all one together. <laughs> Just look We're at all him. connected. Yeah. I believe when it. When you get to a certain point of understanding inside your intellect mind, that connectivity, you realize your hands are basically playing like USB ports. <laughs> <laughs> These are those. Oh, okay. uh, it's crazy to think that something that just grows out of the ground has so much power, and I'm actually holding in my hand right He's now. He's holding shrooms. But here we go. And he takes a bite, and they are genuinely, it's the middle of the night, and they're just in some random spot in the middle of the woods, and the shaman, who's dressed in a plaid shirt and a baseball cap, is talking to him <laughs> about how his hands and feet are USB ports, and the quote-unquote inside intellect mind, whatever the hell that means. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, I think they just found, maybe it's Mike's friends, that they just, they decided, hey, you know what would be funny? Boogie on shrooms. You want to pretend to be a shaman? And he went, yeah. <laughs> I really want them to reveal after this it was a portobello mushroom. And all Boogie yeah. just made all this shit up. Yeah, he's like, fuck, I, I'm seeing shit, boys. Oh, I'm going to the yeah. ninth plane of existence. He gets very oh. high. He would have. Yeah, but I, I reckon he's playing it up as well, Kaya. I reckon he's playing it up, the effect maybe, that he has. Maybe, maybe. Um, also, I did I did check. Yeah. Boogie made a tweet about his gamer tags, and it is Uber Wolfo, meaning he has played two games this year. Four and Final Fantasy. For, <laughs> yeah, okay. and, no, and Spider Man Two. He d didn't even play Final Fantasy Sixteen. Holy yeah, so shit! So there we go. So he that's a lie, then, right? He, he yeah. either didn't buy it or he bought it and didn't play it. E either way, or maybe he maybe they play on his girlfriend's account. Possibly, I think there's a chance there. But I mean, don't regardless, give, he didn't. Don't uh, give him he didn't excuses. Don't give him like a <laughs> yeah. wiggle room. He, he's gonna start. He's gonna start coming to you for advice on like what to say next. There is. There's no way he'd be spending ninety bucks on a game and activating it on her account rather than his own. Um, yeah, I guess. All right, here's Boogie High, and I would like our comment section to help me understand how this helps him get a job, because I still don't see it. I have been false. I have no clue where the fuck I am, or even who I am, and I don't give a fuck. I recognize. Uh, he's about to experience the second part of the realization Bruh. of letting go, and we're gonna get to the other side of it. I told you they'd come. It's going to get nice and bright in about five more minutes. Yeah. And the reflection in the water is really cool, too. It's like two bums talking to each other around the trash fire. <laughs> Dude, the reflection of the water is cool, too. Do you guys think that he's, like, <laughs> playing it up? I don't, I don't think I so. Really don't. And I, I have an explanation for why I think that, because he becomes the generic insufferable shroom user. Anyway, here's... A little bit more of him being high, talking Adam to himself. Parents are just crazy. They're broken people. Parents? Yeah. Stewards? People who are like trying to. to, to. Oh, okay. Okay. 
the inside intellect. It's connecting to the USB. Yep. Mm. That makes a lot of sense, doesn't it? Talking to himself. What? <laughs> I think he forgot the shaman is even there. <laughs> he's like, not, no, he's just. I mean, that shit doesn't matter. <laughs> See, I, I really what, think it's played up. Helpful. I think. I, I really think he's played up. I really think that's what he thinks like being on a true uh, shroom trip is like, and so then he's just played it up. I doubt it. I just don't know why I'm they would it. have to. Why he would have to play it up? I mean, shrooms aren't. Yeah, you true. can get your hands on shrooms. Well, I just think he wanted to paint a picture like he's having like some kind of realization, and that's what's going to save his career. I that's think all wants... people that do shrooms. It is the most objectively just the most insufferable drug that people can do because every single time they do shrooms and then they come out of it. Tell, talking to you about ego death and how it gave them a new perspective on the universe and it's like shut up but anyway he wakes up the next morning and I thought this was super funny because watch what he does right after waking up he has a CPAP machine on he's waddle it he's jiggling no that's his alarm the legends return to life Up. It's like a mummy leaving like I'm a sarcophagus. Sure like really <laughs> Puts on his yeah. glasses, takes a sip of Mountain Dew. Uh, <laughs> oh <my> fucking <laughs> god. <laughs> Alright, no better way to start the morning. <laughs> oh my god. It's worse you than You gotta do the do or else the day is doomed. I can't imagine waking up and taking a swig of Coke. That would taste so fucking bad. Think of your That'd teeth, That'd be the man. worst start. Think of your yeah. fucking teeth. Well, he has oh, veneers. He, just, his teeth rotted beyond repair. But you so still he, have to take veneers. care of those, too. You still have to do something for those. Like, is it that yeah, hard just to polish them from no, time you to time? You yeah. do. No, you, you, you do. My brother's a dentist. He's talked about patients who get teeth ripped out and replaced with that kind of stuff. You don't have to do the same exact stuff, but you do have to take care of them. You can't just abuse the shit out of them. Couldn't you just get yeah, them replaced? Them? Like, yeah, you get, I you suppose. Again. Yeah. That's not cheap. I don't know how much yeah. they are. Anyway, now he talks about um That's fair. How nothing matters, man. Fuck everything. I'm on a higher level of existence. It's, it's so just all bullshit. Like none of this matters. None of it. It's all a construct. It's all a simulation. It's all a <sighs> It's a fucking video game. You know when you die? I think I died last night. Oh, oh my god. Uh, see, I physically he's my playing body it up, strong, man. but Come I think on. I went back into the void we come from. Babbles. He's hitting every trope. My, he's hitting every yeah, trope. Yeah, yeah. He's playing this, up. this help you in any this way. This he's playing up. Yeah. This he is playing up. How does sure. this help? I agree. How does? Well, here's how it helps. He's finally not worrying about money anymore. Oh, that's just stuff that I, I normally worry you should about. Should probably worry, worry about, about my money. Finances. Worrying about my internet. Worry about what people think about me. It's also incredibly stupid. It's all just bullshit. The do in hands. But yeah, he says, I don't, I don't worry about money anymore. I don't worry about what people think about me. If you're a content creator, you're on the internet. Hey, you should worry about what people think about you, your image. You used to be yes. the Mr. Rogers of the internet too. You should worry about your finances if you're broke. Bro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Anyway. I don't have money problems because I'm not thinking about them. <laughs> it's, it's like when you cover your eyes, it's like everything else is gone. <laughs> That's what he's been doing this entire time, though. This this revelation led to nothing. He's he's grand revelation nothing. is to keep doing do the same videos yeah. Yeah. and do the same thing. Wow, his whole fucking drug trip's entire culmination was just relax, just take it easy. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing matters. You're stressing too much, bro. Just like kick back with a dude. Yeah. Just take it easy. I, I, take bet his, I bet his girlfriend loves hearing that, by the way. He's like, ah, don't worry about the money. What? No, yeah, this is his solution. <laughs> well, it doesn't matter because Boogie's opinion is probably she's a woman. She'll never understand this. She'll never figure this out. Such an asshole. Go back to the store and get me the next case of Mountain Dew. <laughs> yeah. Is that the end? Is that the final clip? Yeah, I had 29 clips, that's all of them. And that's yeah. where the documentary ends as well, pretty much. Bravo. Um, he tells Mike, the producer, look, watch, I'm, I'm on a higher level now, man. I did shrooms, so my channel is about to take off. And then Mike does a quick fast forward of Boogie losing subscribers. <laughs> uh, so that's where we are now. So definitely worth checking out if you want the long-form version of this. Thank you, Mike Klum. 
it was a great doc. It yeah. was very funny. Are there things? Yes. Are there things in there we didn't go over? Yeah, there are. There are a few. Okay, cool. I'm surprised. For example, you didn't go over the part where he revisited like his high school fucking baseball field, and he like looks at oh, he gazes yeah. out over the baseball field, and he's like. Little did all those people know that I would become Boogie Two Nine Eight Eight Internet Celebrity. <laughs> oh, oh <laughs> yeah. God! He literally says that. He says something like that. Hundreds of students, and how many of them became famous on YouTube with four million subscribers? And he says one, Stephen Williams. Yeah, it's like, uh, and then gives it like a little fuck. smirk. He's so fucking. It's awe inspiring. <laughs> That's so awful. <laughs> I know. How could this? How could he have such an ego? Like, oh man, everything. He's got like every dislikable trait, honestly. <laughs> and he was I the Mister Rogers it. of the internet. He has a game award from fucking Jeff Keeley himself. It, it is Jeff nuts. Keeley should bust down the doors and take it from him. It's so nuts. How if he just shut the fuck up, he'd probably be doing okay. He'd yeah. still have the same image. If he never yeah. found Twitter and Reddit, he would have the same image today, yep. I bet. If he shut the fuck up, if and he did, why did this he kind of stuff, it, if he did I, this kind of rant on the videos, people would go, Boogie, I'm so sorry you're going through this. I can't believe you have all these issues and you're still making content. Uh, we love you. But he just has to talk about everything and reveal everything and it just puts him in such a bad light. he doesn't change. He doesn't change either. It's crazy. People have given him the solution millions of times, and he just does the same thing. Shrooms didn't even fix it. He he, yeah. he literally will tweet like twice a week. Like, man, if only I would stop tweeting. <laughs> man, things would be so much better if I'd stop just saying everything about my life. Fuck, man, it'd be so good. I actually saw a tweet from him during this episode where he said something to that effect. Hold on, let me pull it up. He unblocks me. I can look it up now. Uh, he's just a nerd who's flexing on other nerds like yeah I fucked an LA 10 and I bet all of his fat like Magic the Gathering friends probably think that is cool but to the rest of us you just sound like an even bigger loser you think they think it's cool the instant he explained that he has to buy buy a $30 entrance to a Magic tournament is the instant I knew that everything he's doing is just irrelevant and desperate attention like, people at card stores are, let's face it, socially inept on the whole. Like, it's a stereotype, but it's true a lot of the time. They are not people that you should aim to impress. But that's what he's doing. He's playing to a denominator that doesn't have very high standards. Oh, no. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's just he genuinely thinks he's flexing on people and instead it makes him look cool. And I think that's why he also at some point started leaning more into the bad boy persona. Of, yeah, I'm gonna make edgy jokes. I'm not Mr. Rogers, actually. I'm a cool guy. And it just doesn't work because you are a fat dork. Well, he's also just a bad person. Like he's he's, he's just, just a, a bad, bad person. person. Yeah. yeah. He is. I think yeah. he's I, I do think he's seething though internally that he lost his nice guy image because he wants people to like him desperately. Yeah. Definitely. He's taking the route of okay, people no longer see me as a good person or as this nice guy so now i need them to think oh here's why i'm not here's what made me fucked up now they'll pity me and sympathize and see oh i'm not a bad person i'm just a person of circumstance it's not my fault he's a person of circumference yeah. <laughs> i don't know i hope that girl gets out of there me too, man. Agree. I'm wishing the best for the girl in that situation. I mean, yeah, I hope truly sad. I hope she gets out of it with as like little damage as possible. Honestly, he's had like I remember when uh, one of the fucking uh, girls that he flew out to live with him for a bit, who was a sugar baby. I'm surprised I didn't go into it in, in this video, but he flew uh, a sugar baby out, and basically, like she she made an exposed video on him after the fact, claiming yeah, that you're talking he was sorry. The red-haired girl, right? Yeah, Lucy Fox, her name was. She yeah. she had a call-out video afterwards. And, I mean, he, he tried... I, I'm pretty sure he tried to discredit her after the fact, saying that he he doesn't, he, like, see hookers and stuff, and he, he didn't know her, he didn't abuse her or whatever. And now it's come out, he's he's basically saying that he, he spent 400 grand, uh, 40 grand a year on, on hookers. Um, yeah, yeah I absolutely. I, I, and the one that said that, like, 
uh, Boogie's the guy that put me out of hookering or whatever, prostituting, because he was so bad. <laughs> I absolutely believe he is terrible to these women. Absolutely yeah. terrible to these women. I can yeah, see that too. I think so as well. I, I absolutely think he just does not have any real respect for women whatsoever. Yeah. He just views them as conquests for sex. Or conduits for his pleasure. Yeah. Sorry, go ahead, Andrew. I wonder if his girlfriend has seen clips of how he talks about women and things of that nature. I don't know. That's the thing that I wanted to mention is, you know, they talked about marriage. From his perspective, I see no downside. He gives a he gets a live-in maid, right? Mm -hmm. He has no assets to lose. So even if she does divorce him the next week, who gives a shit? What's he do? She can't take anything. And from her side, it's nothing but downsides because, again, she doesn't even get anything if he dies, which he will soon. What is What would be the point? He would only be inheriting his debt, right? And a mm -hmm. home that is possibly in shambles. So get out if you ever hear this. I don't even know her name. I didn't catch it, but get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, sincerely. Like, uh, yeah, get out. It's, it's going to lead to damage. And stop yeah. seeking a father figure. You're not going to find it in creepy online men. It's it's yeah. the perfect culmination of lack of self-awareness on both parties. She clearly has whatever going on that she can't see. This is a terrible idea, a terrible decision. He's not a good person. And he clearly is just living in this denial and ignorance land where he sees no problem with meeting a very young fan and immediately hitting on her. She's emotionally damaged and he's narcissistic enough to abuse her. That's, that's yeah. what it is. I think it's worse than that. I think he fully knows what the, what he's doing is mm -hmm. creepy. Because in the documentary, mm -hmm. he even says, I don't remember if it was in any of the clips I played today, but he says, yeah, I know it's creepy. I know I'm 49 and she's literally 29 years younger than me. I know that's wrong. I know I'm going to die on her and she, it's going to ruin her life. He's aware of it. He literally says it. He voices it. But he deserves concern. it, God concern, damn it. He deserves it. Yeah, he, he deserves it. Mr. Rogers. It. Yeah, Mr. Rogers, 4 million subs. He went to high school. Deserves all of he it. He doesn't even have you to know, pay this one 40 grand a year. It's, yeah. It's free. Oh, God, you just brought up a point. There's probably an angle of him that also <clears throat> says, hey, with her, I can get this for free. I save money yeah. being with her. Oh, my God. Well, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ugh. Well, yeah. Of course. Gross. I'm sad you didn't. I'm sad you didn't pull the video. I'm sad you didn't pull the clip of her out in the fucking yard, fucking mowing the lawn, clipping the trees and stuff. Oh yeah, while he's sitting on the fucking uh, like inside watching TV or whatever. Yeah, she's she does the housework. I mean, I don't know if they played it up for the documentary or if she actually does. I would imagine she does. I don't know if she works or contributes anything financially to him. But yeah, she does the housework, which in and of itself is a job, is being a housewife, right? If that's what how they want to live. But on the other hand, he's a house husband, if that's how they want to live. He's at home anyway. That should be his fucking job. I think at some point he says, well, she can't help me. A 20-year-old can't help with my mortgage. It's like, well, I mean, can't have it both ways. She is an adult. She could get a job, right? But for some reason, he just he genuinely doesn't think of real jobs as an option at all. No. He's above them. He, he feels the right. real job is just beneath him. Yeah, he's a giant YouTuber, Kaya. He was one of the first. How could he get a job? How could that ever go he's away? Also, he's oh, yeah. also got, like, no skills as well. He's spent the last 30 well, years... Well, if you listen to him, him yes. Yeah, but do you remember, even the recruitment lady in the interview was like, it's gonna be tough, but I'm sure we can do something for you. And he just had to whip out, yeah, I also used to do porn and people call me a child molester. <laughs> yeah, he's like, oh, shit, this is going too good. He's like, this is going too <laughs> he good. Starts, start sweating. I might, I might get a job. Oh, what's well, saying? Anyway. Uh, uh, I did uh, porn. Uh, uh, by the way, porn industry. Uh, did you, if you look me up, you might find out I'm a pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> Something. What did he say? Uh, you don't on, the, on the way like in here, skills. I stole your pens. You uh. <laughs> there are jobs that he could do. There are jobs that anyone can do. This is why Walmart hires the disabled to just stand by the door and say, have a nice day, sir. That's it. He could yeah. do that. But no, instead he just sits there at the dinner table. Uh, I wish I had clipped this, but he basically tells her, you know, we might have to go back on disability. Really? Like, this is the big bad YouTuber. There is nothing preventing Boogie from working a phone job. He could sit at a desk yeah. at a computer with yeah, a headset so. on yeah. and do calls, do telemarketing, do surveys. There is nothing preventing him from that at all. 
I'm sorry that was an earth-shattering revelation. There was a there was a clip in the video where he's talking to her about how like he's asking her if she'll be fine if they have to move out into a small apartment. He, uh, her, him, and their roommate Chad, who's been living with him for like the last ten years, also doing all the maintenance and stuff. So this is going to be the three of them in this small apartment eventually. Cool. Oh, is that who Chad That'll is? I heard the name, cool. but they kind of glanced over it. That guy must be smart because he wasn't in any of the scenes at all. He wasn't in this documentary whatsoever. Well, what an interesting watch that was, though. Yeah. Movie night. Yeah, that was fun. Cool. <laughs> uh, I did, uh, well, did want to ask Charlie real quick, because he's the only one that played it. Modern Warfare 3, I've heard it's really bad. Oh, fuck me, man. It is the worst Call of Duty campaign imaginable. It is so bad. They cut so good, many corners right? half- I mean, I guess it's good uh, if you want to see it fail, but like they cut so many corners. Half the fucking beginning of the campaign takes place on Warzone map on the Warzone map, and oh. you're just doing DMZ objectives. It's so bad. Why? And the oh, story that's so lazy. is oh, it's so lazy, and the story is so shit. There's not an ending in the game that doesn't actually end. They, they they were so shameless. It's basically like a part one. Modern Warfare 2 story campaign was, I thought, was really bad. Uh, but how yes. do they fucking they they set it up so nicely with Modern Warfare the the new Modern yeah, they just Warfare made it, one? They made it worse. They made it so much worse. I I don't know how they could make it as bad as it currently is. You have to actively try to make it that shit. Shame. And another quick shout yeah. out. Uh, my game of the, I I have my game of the year now. It's the Talos Principle two. It just released. It is so fucking good. Any puzzle fans out there? Um, play the first game first because that was also my second favorite puzzle game of all time. But Talos Principle Two, so fucking good. If you like puzzle games, buy it and please buy it. E- even if you don't, even if you don't like puzzle games, please buy it because I need a third game eventually. So mm, yeah, do it for it. Jackson. Yeah, yeah only please, for Jackson. Yeah. Don't even play it. Just buy it. Please. I, I I've been streaming it on my stream and I've been doing a giveaway each stream. <laughs> I've been giving out <laughs> copies of the Tales Principle 2 <laughs> to ensure that it eventually gets made. I'm just giving them out on my stream. Um so that's been fun. That's actually so su- that's so sweet. It's such a good series, man. I, I know you, you probably don't like puzzle games, but Kaya, Andrew, if you guys do, definitely play it. It's so good. Yeah, mm, I might check it out. Maybe. I, I also finally Three years Ooh. later, me and my buddies finished Divinity 2. It is over. Nice. It's done. Washed my hands Fantastic. of it, and we started Baldur's Gate 3. And yeah. I, oh, yes. good luck, yeah. And that one's I have long to too. say, the juvenile joy we all felt when all our characters are naked, and then you get into a cutscene, and they're, all their peckers are flopping around, and just <laughs> everybody laughs. It's such a good time. It's so childish and fun. So do you, you you agree with everyone else? Do you think it, it'll be your game of the year, Baldur's Gate Three? I we didn't get into the game too much because we just started yesterday, and as you know, you sit in the character creation with your buddies for like yeah. five hours. So I'll let you know in a couple of weeks if I like it. But so yeah, far, I yeah, want to know if it lives like up to your. I want to know if it lives up to your expectations because I know you love those games. You love mm-hmm. that type. I'll of let game. you know. Andrew, anything happening with you? This is like a quasi things we like and things Charlie hates corner. So, <laughs> uh, Ghost Trick I started recently, which What's is really, Ghost really Trick? good. It is also oh, that's a that puzzle detective game. game, isn't it? Yeah, yeah it's yeah, yeah. made by the guy who made Phoenix Wright, I believe. And yeah. it is a puzzle game where you are a ghost that possesses objects and you have to like navigate your way across the screen using only inanimate objects. And it's very clever. It's a, it's a very clever puzzle game. I don't want to spoil too much, but it immediately starts very good. And so far, it's just never dropped that pace. So if you I wanna, yeah, don't I like the time. Talos Principle, but you love puzzle games, play mine instead. No, don't do that. Don't, don't you dare. Play both. Sort of a bitch. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, play both. Uh, play so both, I, play I both. played it because it just got a Switch port like a month ago. So I figured oh, yeah. I'd try it. Yeah. And so if you have a Switch, yeah, it's, an older it's game, on there. Right? It's a, originally a DS game, I believe. Yeah. Um, but yeah. apparently, from what I read online, the Switch port's, like, perfect. Like, it's exactly the same. So, I highly recommend it. If you like, kind of, Phoenix Wright-style detective games, or that quirky, kind of, character-based story stuff. I like puzzle stuff, games in general, so I'm gonna be playing Or puzzle it. games, or any of that. I, I, so far, I'm having a really good time with it. Sweet. Nice. And Charlie, I know what your things you like is gonna be. Because I heard that uh, Attack on Titan's final episode aired this week. 
Yep, I have two things I like, then I'll do it real okay. quick. I like Attack on Titan's ending. I don't think it's perfect, but I thought it was still very good. It, it's my favorite anime now. I thought they were able Ooh. to stick the landing for the most part. And also Alan Wake 2. Oh, is that out? it looks so good. Yeah, Alan Wake 2 is out, and it is extremely good. Ooh. Yeah, I'm excited to play that. That looks incredible. It's. I think it's like the best looking game that's probably it's, ever been released. It is stunning. It is yeah. unbelievably good looking. Yeah, the technology behind it is pretty nuts. Alrighty, that's going to do it for this Things We Like corner. Go check out all of those things, but mostly the Talos Principle 2. Um, uh, other than that, you can also check out patreon.com slash the official podcast. All bonus episodes over there will go on to fund the Talos Principle 3 inadvertently through me spending my money <laughs> that I earned from mm-hmm. Patreon on that. So, yeah, j- go check that out. Tons of bonus content over there. And thank you very much for listening to this. If you listen to this on audio platforms, go check out our YouTube channel. Link below. Uh, you-, you should probably do that if you're listening on audio because there's clips in this episode from the Boogie uh, documentary. So go go check out the YouTube channel for if you want to see the visuals of that. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we'll see you next time. And thank you very much for joining us officially. Goodbye. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you.